Hello and welcome to John Young Photography. Today I'm going to do a review on another one of my cameras, um, the Nikon D610. Um, I did have the Nikon D600 first of all, but the Nikon D600 had a, a problem of dust on the uh, on the sensor. It was basically it was a problem where the the shutter was getting shredded and the shutter mechanism was there was a problem with it it was creating loads and loads of dust which was ended up on the sensor um, now when I first heard about it I, I didn't I didn't have the problem on mine at all no, I had no problems at all I used it for years for years for months and months and months for no problems whatsoever um, and then once I noticed on the top corner of my photograph there was a slight little bit of mark a little bit of dust so I had the problem as well so I sent off the camera to Nikon to get repaired and while it was there I also found out that if you asked them if you asked Nikon they would in some cases replace the Nikon D600 with the D610 which is which is what I've got here so I did I basically wrote them a letter and said you know I wasn't happy that I had this problem, this fault with the D610, and uh, the D600, sorry. Um, and if they sent the D600 back to us, it might happen again, so I'd have to send it back to them again. Um, <coughs> I'm a wedding photographer, so I can't afford to have cameras away getting repaired when I need them for my job. So I sent them to a letter, and thankfully, they, um, they sent me the D610 instead. The D600 was, was a great camera. The, the, the main differences between the D600 and the D610 um, is, is basically, well obviously the new shutter mechanism to stop the dust happening again, which is a relief. Faster frame, faster frame rate, the D600 had a frame rate of 5.5, 5 .5. Uh, the, D6, the D610, <laughs> get this right eventually, the D610 has a frame rate of 6, so not a huge difference. Um, the D610 also has improved white balance. But I never really found any problems with the D600 to be honest with you, but that's what they say. And it's also got quiet continuous shooting mode, which again, I haven't really seen that huge amount of difference in that neither. Uh, I think basically Nikon realised that the D600 had a problem with the shutter mechanism. They decided that basically they needed to replace it. And the easiest way they could do it really was bring out another camera. They brought up the D610, which is what they did. Now, the D600 and the D610, but I'll just talk about the D610 because that's what I've got here anyway. But the D610 has basically, it's a, it's a full frame camera. Because when I did upgrade originally to the D6, D600, I had a D90. And um, the old D90 was a really, really good camera, excellent camera. But it did stall sometimes in low light a little bit. And also, um, the, 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 the frame rate wasn't very fast when I was taking the pictures, but I see the bride walking down. The island and such like it just wasn't fast enough so that's why I originally replaced it with the D600. The D610, great camera, 24, 24 megapixels so obviously a lot better than the D90 which was 16 I think if I remember right it was, D, it was 16. The beauty of that is obviously you get a lot more information in there but also means that you can zoom in um, to a photograph, you can crop in to a photograph you know so you could take a picture um, for, for me, for instance, I could be taking a picture of the bride and groom um, and some, on, a, on a field somewhere, or on, a, on some lawn somewhere, on the grounds of a, of a house and there could be just something I didn't want in the background, you know, I could crop in, I could, I could take out, I could recompose that picture and get it exactly the way I wanted without sacrificing too much detail. You know, there could be some extra guests in the background I don't want in. Yeah, I could clone them out, but I also could crop in. I could crop in a little bit closer and I'm still left with it with a good quality, good size photograph. I'm not I'm not taking away much of the details, so it, it's really good for that. Um, obviously it's full frame compared to the D90. The D90 was a, a crop sensor, and this is full frame, so it's basically using the full. It's basically the same kind of size as 35 mm film used to be. It's, it's, you're getting a lot of information in there in your, in your full frame image, and there's also the advantage of the full frame, which if you look on there, you can you can basically read them about. Yeah, it's good for shall I dip the field and such like. Also, um, 
one of, one of the one of the things I like about this actually this cabinet in, in, and I've actually got the D750 as well. And one thing about the D, this compared to the D750, it's got a nice big info view window there, which is brilliant. You know, the D750 doesn't have it; it's just a small one. The D750, so it's just a good camera. You can see here, I've got the little 50 millimeter and I got 50 millimeter on here because this is actually the camera that my wife uses um, when we do weddings. She tends to sit. I, I tend to be at the front to see her serve. He's taking taking photographs of the bride and groom during the service, just on one side, not too obtrusive. Um, where my wife Katie, she tends to be at the back of the the church or venue, get some sneaky shots, get some shots of the bride and groom from behind, and you know that kind of thing, walking down the aisle, facing each other, looks very nice. And she likes it with a 50 mm lens on, nice, lovely, sharp lens. And on here, I've got a grip on here. Um, this is a young new group and I could do a review on them again later on. I've got one on my D750 as well and I will be doing um, a review on my D750 as well. That's another good camera. So having the grip on just makes a big difference to all nice and nice, nice to hold. It gives a good grip. But anyway, the D610, good camera, very, very good. You're talking 24 megapixels. I'll pick up some of the details. Yeah, you can look online and find some of these details um, on here. But it's it's a... It's 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 a very good camera. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I, you can look at loads of specs. And you can look at specs online, but me personally using it, very very good in low light. Never had any, any problems shooting in low light. The only thing I did have problems with in low light was I found the focus and sometimes was a bit hesitant. That was the, that's the only gripe I can say about this camera really. Sometimes you're just taking a photograph in low light, and it's just kind of hunting. You know, it's just trying to lock on. It's just not getting the shot. Because it's not focusing quick enough, and I've got it set up, which is the best way. Obviously, not you know. So if it doesn't get focused, it's not going to take a photograph. So I'm trying to take a photograph. Um, maybe it's during the first dance or something like that, for instance, and it might just miss that shot. Not all the time, just sometimes it does happen. So basically, that's 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 one of the reasons uh, why I upgraded this to the D750. But again, I'll discuss that later with the D750. This does have two card slots which is fantastic. Yeah, I have this set up basically so it's a duplicate when I'm doing a wedding I'll, it'll record me raw because obviously it'll shoot raw, not shoot raw JPEG, JPEG and, and basically so I have it so it does a copy of one card to the other. So if anything happens to my first card I've got a backup. So I'm not left high and dry with no photographs which obviously you don't want for a wedding. And so I've got a duplicating from card A slot to card B slot, so you've got two of the same. You could have it so it's shooting raw in card A slot and shooting and then putting JPEGs on the card B slot, for example. It's entirely there's a few different settings you can set it for. And so I have so maximum ISO so I'll go up to um, 25,600 or something. I've never used it that high. I mean, I use it on probably 2,000, something like that. 2,500. I don't go too high in the ISO. I tend to find that photographs. Yeah, the, 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 the noise of high ISO is, is, is it's not too bad but I prefer to keep the ISO as low as possible. I tend to find ISO 800 will cover you for a lot of situations but it, it can go high if you, if you want it to and, you, and you know, it's going to give you reasonable, it's going to give you good results. Uh, and, and results, you know, if you do get any noise in there you can clean them up very easily in, in, your, in your chosen software, Photoshop or whatever. Um, use a filter or something you can easily remove any of that noise but it is it's very 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 good 30 focus points that's one of the things on this actually um, when it came out is that the focus points are very very close together very, very grouped together a small group of focus points some people found that a big problem uh, it didn't bother me too much uh, but some people didn't like the idea of, of the focus points being so tight together and the D750 is very similar as well and just means that obviously the focus points are covering the whole screen. You've, you've, you, you know, you've got to compose. You've got to move your camera. If you find if you want certain focus points to hit your subject, because it's basically like a small little area in the middle. So, would I recommend this for doing professional work? Yeah, I would. It's a, it's a good camera. I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong with it really, especially the D610 compared to the D600. You know, it's, it's the shutter problem, the dust on the shutter has been solved. I've had no more problems with that. It's a good light little camera. I mean, this looks bigger because it's got the grip on the bottom, as I said before. One one thing I would say with with this camera is get a good fast SD card to go in there because if you've got a slow card, 
it'll be it'll slow the camera down. When you're taking multiple shots, you're taking a picture of the bride coming down the aisle, um, and you want to, you know, get quite a few shots, or you've got the camera on continuous mode, more likely. So the bride's walking down the aisle, and you've got the shutter down, and the camera's click, you know, taking plenty of shots to to get that lovely progression. She's walking down the aisle, and her face and a smile and things. You've got a slow memory card in here. It'll it'll the once the buffer's full on these cameras because the buffer isn't very very big on this camera neither. That's a, that's another point with it. Is it'll then start backing up and it just won't transfer the pictures quick enough to the card because it's not fast enough. So you'll start to see the camera slow down. And the last thing you want is your camera to be slowing down as the bride is walking. To, you know you you can miss a, a beautiful shot. You can miss just when she's having a big smile on her face or she sees the groom at the front. Um, so in situations like that, you don't want to slow shutter card, sh don't want to slow memory card. Um, so definitely recommend getting fast, fast cards for that, and that would make a big difference. On the whole, yeah, I would recommend this camera for for professional work. I've used it for many weddings. I still use it now. My wife uses it all the time. Um, produces lovely results. You get a lot of bang for your for your buck. You get a lot of value for money. And obviously because this D750 came out since then, you could probably pick a, a, a D610 even cheaper now. Uh, and they're, they're an excellent camera. And once you've gone full frame, you're not going to go back to being a, a crop, you know, a crop sensor, like a DX camera. This is FX. You're not going to go back to, to a crop sensor. Because the quality, size of the prints, the quality of the prints, quality of the images, I should say, or in the prints afterwards, is, is excellent. Now we'll be doing a, a review on the D. 750. My just my thoughts. I mean, this is just my thoughts, you know, because obviously there's loads of specs out there. I'm not going to go into all the specs and all the details of the camera. That's something you can do yourself. And um, you can look at all the details and whatnot. This is just my own thoughts on the camera and how well it works with the with the work I do. And it does. It works really well. It works really, really well. It's a good, it's a good camera. Good for wedding work. Good for professional work. Good for portraits. And it's going to be. You can have no problems at all. I would have thought. As I say. The only thing I would say with this camera is the focus in, in low light. That's my only downside that I've found with this camera. That's, that's truth be told. That's the only thing I've found with it. Everything else, good camera. Good, good at high ISO. Um, good quality photographs. Um, focusing in normal light is fine. Focusing in good light has no problems whatsoever. It's only when it comes down to focusing in very dull, dull light, I just found it was a little bit hesitant. To, to take the shot, it was a little bit slow, which is why I upgraded to the D750. And I will be doing a review on the D750. Thanks for watching. This is Journey in Photography. Goodbye.